Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel Rapid Data ID Solutions once again. Um, today we are going to talk about LSMW uploading using the IDOC BAPI mechanism or BAPI IDOC mechanism rather. And uh, previous in the previous week we have uploaded data of the bank master using a recording. We are going to upload the same data object using the BAPI IDOC mechanism as well. And we are going to show you how it works. So let's get straight into the LSMW and go through step-by-step -step processes. Sorry. Now I had created one beforehand, but let's ignore that one and let's call it Bankmaster1. And we are going to create a new one. So we have to create a new one and let's call it Upload Bankmaster using IDOC mechanism rather BAPI IDOC mechanism so let's come here and Inside this, we got these options again. And last week, we, we have used batch input recording. This week, we are going to use this next method called BAPI. And let's find out the object here, which we are going to use to upload bank master. So select and search the bank. So we got this BUS1011. That's the business object, which contains the creation method of the bank master. We are going to use this. And then you can see the message type associated with this business object creation of the bank master is um, bank create bank underscore create so let's save it and um, when you save it uh, it should have thrown um, a message that include the the inbound IDO processing for this IDO type the reason why it didn't why it didn't throw up the message is because uh, let's go back a couple of steps and we can see so in the in the project selection screen you get a um, setting menu menu called setting inside the setting you got this inbound IDO processing inside this you have to you have to um, apply these details before you use um, IDO or the BAPI IDO mechanism to upload data objects so when you include so this is these are the ports that you have this is the LSMW file port. Um, if you don't know how to create that, you can ask your basis or the infrastructure personnel to create that, but it's very simple. Um, you can see it. Uh, this is how you're going to store the information. So it's very simple. It's a simple port. And then you just um, put an outbound file name called file underscore IDOC, um, uh, or you can give your own name as well. So this is very simple as you see it here. Now you put it here and also you have to include the partner profile as well, or partner type as well. Um, and then partner number, which is itself. So S4H client 100 is the partner to itself. And inside this partner, you got the um, different inbound, so inbound IDOC type, message types. Uh, this is, this has come here. Uh, you can either um, add it, add this one uh, manually here yourself once you have the uh, partner you know the partner number yourself and then otherwise you can come inside here and when you come inside here and when we have included these details and you save it it should have created automatically that um, that record inside the um, partner details or partner profile or the inbound message type Nevertheless, we have got this one ready here and um, we can go back and we can have the same process that we have before. We had before, we create a structure, very simple. Okay, that structure, you can give it any name. Um, uh, bank, bank, sorry, bank master details. Save it here. Let's go back. Let's include the source fields once again here, as you have we have done in the previous previous one as well. Um, let's include the fields which are required, uh, 
and we know we have we use uh, C type as our or the cat type as our standard input field types. Let's save it and then come back here and then we have to associate the input structure to the input structure of the IDOC types. IDOC type in this or the message type in this case. Um, so and we have got two segments to be mapped. We are we have got all the fields in this structure in one structure so we could map one structure to two segments. Come here and then you have to you can map with the names are different it do not map automatically um, so auto field mapping would not work here because the names are different so let's include them it's only a handful of fields so it shouldn't be a problem and let's let's assign two other fields the bank name and the region code as well these are the only four fields that we are going to we have we have got in our file and riga and only the bank bank country and bank key are the mandatory fields so in the specify file once again we put the we use the same data that we have before this one we have used before now in this case um, we are going to have pass on the same data and uh, pass it to idog and we'll see how the idog behaves um, does it create the data or does it throw the error or does it update the, the existing data this length is a problem so we're going to reduce the length doesn't matter now oh, we put the directory uh, because we didn't properly configure the logical file path so we are going to have to have that um, file path properly maintained so let's save it here done sorry let's let me just go back there once one more time and then double check the details I put there yeah, yeah that's fine all good as expected um, assign file again it's automatic because it's just one one input file and let's read data let's read data I'm not going to take you through the read data uh, step you can do it uh, but I know there record has been read properly and all the field names have been read properly as well so now we can create the idoc so idoc let's process the idoc now the idoc has been processed now that's interesting because we thought the bank data is already created so we want to see what happened so let's go back one step and we got the steps included in the lsmw to go to idoc display so let's, let's display the idoc here so this is the idoc number that we have got created in this execution and as you see see it here idoc has been called and the idoc has been um so yeah so nothing probably nothing has been changed this it's all the same so the, the idoc has been called and it didn't make any change here now we just want to see um if we can make some changes because we didn't make any change in the even in the description as well so let's create a new idoc from this idoc using w19 now, this is another thing that you can learn you can create a new idoc from an existing idoc by by this mechanism so before we create a new idoc let's change the description at least uh, new idoc like that let's see if we it creates a new idoc does it process immediately let, let me see um, and I'll explain to you if it doesn't process immediately it does it didn't process immediately it went to the status 64 that means the processing of the idoc is not immediate the reason for that is this let me go you take you to the w20 t code once again and then let's go inside this inside this one and we can see that um, the trigger of the idoc is by background program uh, so if it was this second option then the idoc would have been processed immediately so regardless um, you can change it and play around with that one later but for now let's process this one with the background processing which is bd87 t code and it will process let's process it it's processed now you do you want to see if the um, if the 
description is changed. Let's check. Yes, the description has been changed. So the IDOC um, mechanism worked fine. Now I wanted to show you one more thing. So let's create a new IDOC. Um, before I take you there, let me just explain to you what I'm trying to do here. So in this IDOC, I just want to pro fail an IDOC and reprocess. Now, I can't fail this IDOC. And, and because the IDOC is not failed, I can't modify this IDOC. Um, so if I go inside here and try to go to change mode to modify the IDOC, it cannot modify the IDOC and reprocess because this IDOC has been processed. Only unprocessed IDOCs can be modified and reprocessed. So in this case, we can create a new IDOC and while you create a new IDOC, let's let's modify the data. So this is the data which is modified. Now this format is incorrect for the AU country key, country uh, AU country, and um, and therefore this IDOC will fail. Now um, IDOC has been created. Now let's try to process the IDOC and see if it fails. And if it fails, then we will modify this IDOC to the correct value and reprocess. So let's do it. Again, you have to go to BD87. You understood the reason before why it doesn't process immediately. So you have to use this background program to process it. Now, you can see this IDOC is in 51 status and it tells you clearly the reason for that. The length is not correct. That's not the right format of the... Um, so, so for that, so we have to modify this IDOC and, and update the value to be able to process this IDOC. Let's do that. And to do that, let's modify and let's process, create a new IDOC, maybe 89, for example, so that we create a new IDOC instead of updating the existing one. So we have got this one modified and the status will become 69. Um, you can see it here, display. So you can see the IDOC, the same IDOC has got into status 69 because it's modified. It is, it is possible to be modified because the status of the IDOC was 51 initially after the processing of the IDOC. Now let's go here and come back here and process. And it's processed. So now you understood how you can modify an IDOC and reprocess it. And it is very useful when you've got only a handful of records to be processed and you've got some data quality issues in those IDOCs and you don't want to re we done the entire process and, and prepare a new file and, and uh, do an end to end process. So let's double check if it is created or not. FI03. And it was, I think it was 89. Yeah, this is created as well. So as you can see it here, it's done. So we have now learned two mechanisms, two, uh, two mechanisms of using LSMW to create uh, data. So inside this one, we have learned this, this batch input, we have learned this second step. Third step is no different than the second step. Third step contains only the IDOC type. So we could have used the same process. And uh, let me show you, let's do it here once again. Uh, okay, so it might be in the modify status. So let's go back. Not this one, which um, which one was in this? Let's go back to initial screen for all of them and then try to open the same LSMW in change mode. Ah, maybe another one. So let's check which one that is. Possibly this one. Yes, this is the one. Go to change mode. Ah, <laughs> even not this one. So let's close this one. Let's close this one. Let's close this one. Let's close this one. Maybe this one. Close this one. Maybe this one. I don't know where it is. Okay, this this is the one which was. 
the first execution and it was okay so now let's do one thing let's remove and use this option which is no different okay now save it because we save it here save it so now we come back so it has come here but it's no different than the the maybe the this this is removed or no, this is not removed as well so we can run the same process again the mechanism is slightly different it's not different again like i said before it's the uh, it's calling up the um idoc type directly because many objects don't have um a separate business object and the bapi concept inside the bapi um we we use the idoc type anyway so let's go to the we have used the idoc type in this case directly so you can create an idoc again from here directly so no issues yeah you could see the processing is done so no issues so you have you have learned three options to three options of uh, the uh, input methods inside the lsmw now we need to learn the direct input of the batch input and um, we are going to utilize direct input to upload text and I will show you in a different video how to use how to upload text and that's a text specific as video as well you'd learn a few things about text as well at the same time you'd learn to use lsmw text upload lsmw direct input method as well okay thank you and it's no different than so the batch of direct input are the same mechanism so some objects are done by the by batch input some some objects are done by direct input the main difference is the the amount of validations being done inside these input methods um, is uh, more in case of batch input and less in case of direct input so the uploading speed of direct input is much higher than the uploading speed inside the batch input methods okay you've learned a lot today i believe so uh, we will see you in the next week